Hello everyone, it's Dawn and welcome back to my channel. Well, in my last video, I did part one of our box, our layered box. And in this part two, we're going to be making these gorgeous trays that you can put your goodies and your treats in. So we're going to be making the trays today. Yeah. So I'm just going to pop the box on the floor out the way so that I don't knock it over. So you will need a base. Again, this is a constructed element. When I did mine, I did it with an A3 card and I suddenly realised that perhaps not everybody's got an A3 card. So I redesigned it so that you can use an A4 card, which most people will have in their stash. And you need to cut your base down to 10 and a half by six and a half inches. And so I've already done that. And that will be the base of your tray. Then you will need two long pieces, which measure ten and a half by two and a half. Mm. So let's just pop that to the side for a moment. And what you need to do on this, to save a little bit of time, I've already done the scoring. You need to score at a half, at one, at one and a half, and at two inches. And I will put all of these measurements in the description box below the video. Just click on the word more and it will open up and you'll find everything you need down there. And for this, you will need a hot glue gun. Now, I found a way of doing it from where I sit. I've had to just shove my table over a bit because I found right in the corner, I didn't even know it was there, an extension lead. I'm not even sure where it plugs into one of the main sockets, I'm sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to, actually not that one. These are our score lines. So to recap, we've got a half, one inch, one and a half and two inches. Yeah. And what we're going to do, we're going to fold. You can use a bone folder if you want to, but to be honest with you, it's not really necessary. Just fold and burnish all along those creases like that. And you will need two of these. These are the long edges and you will need two of these. And again, all of this will be down in the description box below. And you click and you do that and you fold them all and you do that to both of your long edges. Now, to put them together, we're going to make a type of cube, type of. So what we do is we fold it over. I've got my glue gun warming up. In fact, I've been, I've prepared. I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me make five trays because I'm putting five trays in mine. I've already made four, but I'm going to make one with you today. So I've already, so it's like a mule morning. I have to warn you folks, this is a long project. So it's not for mass producing. So unless you want to spend an awfully long time doing it. So once you've folded and burnished your scores, Fold along them again until you get something that looks like that. And make sure that this bit stays on the top for the time being. It'll go on the bottom eventually, but for now you need it on the top. And I am going to use my hot glue because we need this to stick. You could use your tacky glue if you want to, but I'm going to use hot glue because I want this to stick straight away. And I have got some glue sticks just off camera waiting for me in the wing, so to speak. So we're going to just put some glue along there. Now do watch your fingers, folks, because this is hot, especially when it's been on as long as mine has. If you want about a five minute leeway, I would suggest you leave it on, your glue go on for at least half an hour. And that will give you about five minutes. I know that's not long, but it's probably long enough. And you're going to do that to your other bit as well, your other long strip. So again, just give it a final fold, fold it up, if I do it this way, fold it up so that you've got one little flap, put that there in a minute, on top. So lift it up like that. We're going to take our glue gun. I'll just have to move over a bit because the lead won't stretch any further. So we're going to just pop that through like that. Make sure we get right on the end. Tuck it in and push it down. And these are the edges or the long edges to your tra to the trays. So if we make all the edges up first and then we'll put the tray together. So then you need two short edges and these measure, if I can find my lines, five and a half by, again, by two and a half, five and a half by two and a half. And again, you're going to score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half and two inches. And once again, all of these will be in the description box below. And I'm going to fold them up like that, fold all along all the edges. And again, just like we did with the long edges, we're going to fold it up in this shape, have an edge at the top. Just get rid of that piece of rolled up sticky tape that's been following me around all morning. Squeeze a line of glue there, 
fold it in and press it down. But again, do watch your fingers. So we've got that one and we've just got one more to do. So I thought as we were doing this for the first time, we do we do the whole lot, apart from the cutting and the scoring, because that that's what takes the time. We do the actual construction part together on video. So no editing here. What you see is what's going to happen. So that's how we get our edge. That's how we get the walls of our tray, if you like. So now what we need to do is bring our base back in like that. And we're going to make this look like a tray. So what you need to do, you need to find the glued edge. So this bit that you've just glued down, that bit is going to go on the base. So find that first. I'm going to find mine now on all four on all four pieces. Do yourself a favour and find all the sealed edges first and have them face down. So I'm going to prepare mine now and I'm going to start with the long edges. There's no particular reason for that, just because I feel like it. And I'm going to have to slide over a bit because again, I'm running out of I'm, the lead, the lead's running out. I should have moved my table over just a little bit more really, but never mind. We'll manage. So put that along there we've already got our edge to the base so the glued edge to the base like that just hold it for a couple of seconds to let it set up and we're going to do that on that side as well and I would suggest all as well this bit here the bit that you've glued have it to the bottom and that bit to the inside it just makes it look tidier so we're just it just about all oh, that just about reaches that's handy so we're just going to squeeze a line of glue down there. I'm going to have to get myself another glue stick in a minute, but that's okay. I've got loads on the table. And we're going to stick that like that. So then turn it round. I'll just pop another glue stick in my gun. There we go. And to do, and you do exactly the same on the shorter edges as well. Again, make sure the glued edge is at the base and that it's facing inwards and that should sit in there really nicely but we're going to, we are going to glue it first and then I'll show you after we've done this bit I'll show you what we do to make the put the ribbon poles so we put that in there that fits really snug if you find that it or if you feel that it's a bit too snug mine are all right I think I'm happy with mine but if you find it's a little bit too snug, what you can do is just cut a tiny sliver off the end. But my, I'm happy with mine, so I'm going to leave it like that. And I'll show you what we do about these corners. These corners, they're all right, but I'll show you how we cope with that at the end. So you can leave it, but I'll show you the options at the end. So we're just going to very quickly pop a line of glue along there. Slot that in there. Do you know what? I do feel that that one is a little bit too snug, to be honest with you. So I'm going to cut just a tiny bit off. That's that's better. So I've got my scissors there. So we will deal with these corners uh, on the very last step. But what we need to do next, or what we're going to do next, is we're going to. This is so that's our tray all nice and finished. That was quick and easy, wasn't it? Once you've done the scoring and the cutting, or the cutting and the scoring. Putting it together is quite easy. So we're go what we're going to do next, we're going to deal with the ribbon. I've got two red, because we've got a red box, I've got a couple of red ribbons. And what we need to do first, I've decided to put two pulls. I know in my sample one I showed you, I only have one through the middle, but I decided it might, need, it might be better to have two. So I'm not going to measure it. If you want to measure yours, by all means go ahead, but I'm not that conscientious. So what I'm going to do is decide where I want my ribbons. And I'm going to use my scissors to poke a hole to begin with, or to make a mark anyway. So, and I'm happy with those marks where they are. So what I'm going to do now is use my scissors, keep them closed, poke it, twist it. We'll, we'll do the other one in a minute. And what, what I do is I twist, I push my scissors through almost to the end and rotate them to make a hole. Now I know that doesn't look very attractive, but you won't see that by the time we're finished. So I'll show you that again. So where you put your marker, you could use a pencil if you want to, I didn't, I just poked it with my scissors. But if you'd rather be sure and mark it with a pencil first, that's absolutely fine. So we're just going to rotate 
the scissors at the widest point. So, and I know that's not exactly equal and they're not equal to the edge, but that doesn't really matter. Now I'm using some organza ribbon. And again, we will do this on both pieces. So what you do is you fold it, it doesn't really matter. I don't really know how much, how long mine are, to be honest with you, about four or five. I'd say they're about, I'd say five to six inches. So say five inches, I haven't measured it, but it's roughly five inches, probably. And we're going to fold that over like that, push it through that hole. And I'm going to use some ordinary sticky tape just to hold it in place because it'll be covered up. You won't see this by the time we're finished. So this is just to hold the ribbon down just for a moment. And that didn't hold it particularly well, so we'll put another bit on. So People say you should never bite ribbon. I've never understood why. I'm not going to eat it, but I always bite it off. You could use your scissors. So we're going to do that just once more. I'll show you that once more as we're doing the construction together. So fold it in, just twist it between your thumb and your forefinger like that and push it through that hole like that. Turn your box over and you can splay it out a bit like that if you want. So once again, I'm going to take my tape and we probably won't need any more than that. And that's just to hold it down for a minute while we get it into place. Now, we're going to cover that ribbon up with a couple of squares. I haven't even measured mine, they're not even proper squares, but roughly two by two or two and a half by two and a half ish. If you're really conscientious, what you could do, you could make another ten and a half by six and a half base and just put another base on, which will cover it completely and there won't be any seams and there won't be any joins. If you want to do that, you can. If I'd have thought about it earlier, I might have done, but I've only just thought about it. But I'm just going to cut these off or take, I've got double sided tape on the back of these, by the way. And I'm just going to stick it down. Now, the measurements aren't really important. As long as they're enough to cover the ribbon, it really doesn't matter. But as a rough guide, I would say two and a half squared. And I've got double sided tape on the back. You can use glue if you want to but I've used my tape. Now you can leave it like that if you want to, but if you just want to tidy up these corners a bit, what I've done, again, I've used some of my scraps. You get a lot of scraps in this. In this project, you get an awful lot of scraps. So what I did, I've kept some of my scraps back and then cut another and cut four two and a half inch squares. And from those, I've just cut an L shape, which is roughly half an inch deep by obviously it'll be a half by two and a half. I haven't measured it. If you want to measure it, if you're giving this gift or even more importantly, if you're selling them, you might want to measure that and you might want to put another base on the back. But this is going to be a gift, but the person I'm giving it to isn't going to measure it. And then and they're not going to worry about whether it looks perfect. So they won't worry about it. So I shan't. So what we do is we just put that on there and I'm very quickly going to do that to all four corners. So we just run a bead of glue up there and another one like that. Pick them up. I've already cut them out. This just makes the corners just a little bit tidier. And then I'll turn it around like that. We'll very quickly do the other two. We're nearly done. Oh, this piece of tape still following me around. Goodness me. It's been following me around all morning, that piece of screwed up sellotape or sticky tape. I don't know why. And we're nearly done, guys. So, the last one. So, just to make these corners really tidy. So, there we go. I thought, well, I know I could have done one, sped it up, and then, or done one and showed you, but I thought as we're doing this from scratch, we might as well do it all together. And then all you do, I'm just going to grab my box, which is on the floor beside me, pick it up like that. You can pick it up like that, or you can pick it up from the sides. You don't have to put these handles on if you don't want to, you could just pick it up from the sides. But I think that having some loops looks pretty, oops, like that. So all you do, once it's done, this is a bit hot still, because the glue's still a bit hot and you put that in there. I would say you probably might be able to get more. We've got five in here. 
You could probably just about squeeze another one in, but I think five is enough. Now, just a little quick tip before I leave you. If you want to make more than five, if you want it higher, you will need to, when you make your box, you will need to add, no, you won't, you will need to add, you will, yes, you will need to add quarter of an inch for every, no, you won't, you'll need to add half an inch, I beg your pardon. If you want to make this higher, because you want more boxes, you will need to add half an inch for every other tray. So if you want to add two more trays, for example, you will need to add another inch to the height of the box. So just look back at the previous video and it'll give you all the measurements. I, I'll, if I can, I'll try and link it under, underneath this one, but it'll be there. They'll all be together. And the final project or the final, possibly the final part anyway, will be the lid. But I haven't yet decided whether I'm going to do the lid in one or two parts. It depends how it goes. So we will do the lid. Where are we today? Monday. So I'll give you a few days. I'm going to come back on Thursday, I think. I'll come back on Thursday and I'll show you how to do the lid. And depending on how quickly it, we might actually, do you know what? Let's go for it. Let's just do the lid in one go, including it's going to be a gold lid. I'm going to use gold mirror card because this is a Christmas present or it will be for Christmas. I'm going to use gold mirror card and we're going to do the whole lot and I'm going to show you how we decorate it in one go. So it might be a little bit longer but there you go. So there is our box so far and our five trays for our goodies and I will come back on Thursday and show you how to finish this project and do the box and the decorations on the top. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and I hope you give it a go yourself. Let me know how you get on in the comments. And if you have any other questions or comments, please do drop them in the comments below. I read every single one and I will reply to every single one. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really love that. And if you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, please do click that subscription button or subscribe button and the notification bell, especially if you're following this series and then you'll see the final part of this project on Thursday. So I will see you then. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Take care, everybody. Have fun. And as always, happy crafting. Bye bye for now.